As a little 90s Norwegian boy, I grew up playing computer role-playing games. But as our generation was crossing the threshold of teenage years, CRPGs slowed down a little due to the advancements of console gaming. Thankfully, CRPGs rose from the ashes like the Eastern Roman Empire in the last decade, which gave us new installments of beloved IPs and also introduced us to new game worlds. With the rise of indie studios and crowdfunding, we witnessed a wave of creativity that pushed boundaries. CRPGs during this period thrived on giving players agency, blending classic mechanics with modern innovations. If you are new here, consider subscribing to the channel. I love talking about single-player RPGs especially, and having you all listen to it makes it a campfire experience. The channel also has membership perks available. Check them out. Let's start with Wasteland 2, the title that probably started the CRPG revival. Developed by Inexile Entertainment, it is the sequel to 1988's Wasteland. It features turn-based combat that requires careful planning. It feels like a mix of XCOM and Black Isles Fallout. Cover is useful, adding both defensive and aim bonus. But it also is destructible and you need to use your party's diverse skills and abilities to outmaneuver enemies, as they matter a lot more here. None of the skills available are useless, which makes focusing on a few difficult. This is where that careful planning part comes in. There's also no stealth involved. Conflicts will always become straight-up brawls. In Exile provides a nice selection of pre-made characters, but you will enjoy your creative characters more. Wasteland 2 is set in a post-apocalyptic world where a nuclear war broke out between the United States and the Soviet Union. The game takes place in 2102, 15 years after the original Wasteland. The map is populated with factions, each with their own beliefs, goals, and methods. Some players' choices have lasting impacts on the game's world and the resources available to the player. You will be presented with morally complex situations, forcing you to make difficult decisions that don't have clear right or wrong answers. Disco Elysium. That game follows the story of Lieutenant Harry, assigned to investigate the death of a hanged man with his partner, Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. He wakes up in a trashed hotel room with no memory due to severe drug-induced amnesia. The game offers a rich, layered story that dives deep into the human psyche, Exploring themes like existentialism, politics, morality, and personal identity. Unlike most other modern games, the protagonist here is a loser. And the game doesn't shy away from exploring his vulnerabilities. Which is a rare thing these days, as games have become afraid of letting the player fail. Players experience his struggles with amnesia, addiction, and a shattered life, making for a profoundly emotional and immersive narrative. Disco Elysium reminds me of Planescape with its focus on dialogue and decision-making. The system is not limited to just talking to other people. It also involves internal debates within Harry's mind. Different skills can manifest as voices or personas that argue with each other, offering advice, conflicting opinions, or even mocking player decisions. The game revolves around skill checks, where outcomes are determined by a combination of the player's decisions and dice rolls. The game also doesn't have combat. This approach emphasizes the importance of conversations and choices, making every interaction meaningful. Disco Elysium is special because it pushes the boundaries of what an RPG can be, offering a deeply narrative-driven experience that is as much about introspection and personal growth as it is about solving a murder mystery. Pillars of Eternity games had it all. Enjoyable real-time with pause combat, a good soundtrack, the artwork, thoughtfully crafted maps, the detail on the characters and their equipment. Most of all, the world building is top-notch. Obsidian really are masters at this, and they knocked it out of the park with this series. You can spend hours studying the in-game lore, talking to people, how their lives are ruined by the actions of the gods. The writing is world-class. The pathfinding can cause some problems sometimes, but it does not become a major issue. Like most of the games of this list, I am often torn between whether I love the second or the first one more. For this list, I'm going with the first one. The pirate theme of the second game did not sit as well with me. I don't know why they did not keep the same theme as the first game. And the ship battle was something I was too dumb to understand. Duh. That being said, the sequel is by no means a bad game. Of course not. It's really good. 
Pillars of Eternity draws inspiration from classic RPGs like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. It offers a nostalgic gameplay experience. It takes place in the world of Eora, created by Obsidian. Players take on the role of a Watcher, a character who can interact with souls and view past memories. How fun, just like Grandma's house. There's about 11 classes, each with unique abilities and customizing race, background, stats, which influence dialogue and gameplay. The game really emphasizes exploration as well, where players unlock and explore locations, complete quests, and interact with NPCs. You can recruit up to five companions, each with their own story and quests. There's also the reputation, where choices impact how factions and NPCs react to the player, influence the game's outcome. Oh, and you need to manage a stronghold, but it's not complex, to be honest, which is a good or bad thing depending on personal preference. Pillars of Eternity is special because it successfully blends deep storytelling, meaningful choices, and strategic gameplay. It was able to create an experience that resonated with both fans of classic RPGs and newcomers to the genre. Kingmaker is an impressive adaptation of Pathfinder tabletop RPG. Owlcat Games captured the creative freedom and magic of a tabletop RPG adventure in a way few others do. The depth of the experience can be intimidating when you first start the game, but there are plenty of in-game resources and customization options to welcome newcomers. Out of all the CRPGs that made a name for themselves the last decade, this one I truly believe is solely for hardcore CRPG fans. The knowledge base you'll need to play it most effectively hampers the game just a little bit. If you really want a Pathfinder title to be your first title, Wrath of the Righteous is the better entry point to the series than Kingmaker, in my opinion. It is a story-driven title based on the six modules that make up the Pathfinder Adventures Path Campaign, published in 2010. And you get to experience the narrative with a character you can truly make your own. But be warned, this game is a heaven for those who love customizing every little aspect of their character. I'm not kidding. There's a high chance you will spend hours in the character creation menu before you even start the game. The different classes, skills, abilities, alignment system, depending on player choices, the amount of combat here is insane. It's definitely over 100 hours long. Combat offers both real-time with pause and turn-based, allowing players to choose their preferred style of play. Personally, turn-based mode suits this game better, I think. The writing does get a little inconsistent here and there. It's inconsistency and difficulty curve sometimes makes it difficult to progress, but that's not a, a big deal. The game is also a little on the buggy side sometimes. Kingmaker also has a realm or kingdom management aspect which can be distracting or time draining at times, but you can automate those. However, don't let these flaws stop you from playing this amazing game. Owlcat was successful in creating the feel of playing an epic tabletop campaign. Despite the slight drawbacks, Kingmaker is a deep, challenging, and highly enjoyable title that any hardcore CRPG fan would love to play. Now, let's talk about CRPG's little darling, Divinity Original Sin 2. The title that skyrocketed Larian Studios' reputation as perhaps the best developer of this era. The first title often gets overlooked in this conversation, and it's understandable when you play the sequel, but check the first title if you haven't yet, it's still okay. Nominated for various Game of the Year awards, Divinity Original Sin 2 basically made CRPGs a household name again. The game sold over a million copies, which is crazy numbers for a niche indie CRPG. Character creation is a major reason why I love this game so much. Six pre-made characters with backstories are available to us, while only humans were playable in the previous game. Original Sin 2 also allows players to play as elves, dwarves, and lizards, all either living or undead. Each variation gives occasional unique dialogue options and influence the behavior of certain NPCs towards them. The undead was my favorite. The origin story of a custom character will give them specific dialogue options. The six pre-made characters have dialogue options unavailable to any other character, as well as one side quest for each involving unique events and interactions over the course of the game. The game is set in the richly detailed fantasy world of Rivellon. Rivet, riv, rival, revival. Rivellon! <coughs> Larian's own IP dating back to the Divinity Games of old. The story takes place after the death of Lucian, 
whose power, once protected, with him gone, the world is plagued by monstrous creatures that attacked all living things. We play as a sorcerer, an individual with the innate ability to wield source energy. Source is the world energy of from which magic is born. The player is captured at the start of the game and taken to a prison fort by order of the Magisters, because our use of source basically attracts these monsters. So the story goes from there. Original Sin games are responsible for making me fall in love with turn-based combat. It uses Larian's action point system and involves their world-famous environmental interactions. Factors like fire, water, and high ground play major roles in strategizing. You can make it rain. And use electric bolts to shock everyone in the area of effect. Fun! Seriously, this game is undoubtedly one of the best CRPG experiences ever created. Perhaps the best, if Baldur's Gate 3 didn't exist. Finally, I want to talk very briefly about Tyranny and Age of Decadence. As honorable mentions, Tyranny I love. Fulfilled an unfulfilled desire of many gamers, by the way. Playing as the villain, set in a world that's transitioning from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age, it flips the script by placing players in the role of an enforcer for a tyrannical overlord. It's an amazing game that explores themes of power, authority, and the nature of evil, offering a narrative that challenges players to think critically about their decisions and their consequences. But all of it falls flat with the abrupt ending of the story. It is Obsidian, so I was not really surprised. The Age of Decadence is set in a post-apocalyptic world where the remnants of a once great empire lies in ruins. I know we have heard this a million times, but players' choices have significant impacts on the world, with the narrative reacting dynamically to their decisions. Combat is turn-based and the gameplay is challenging to get into. And the gender you choose for your character plays a part here as well. Instead of a traditional class-based system, the game uses a skill-based approach. Players can choose from various backgrounds and professions, each influencing their initial relationships with factions and gameplay style. If you are into political rivalries, check this out. You can manipulate factions, pursue different agendas, or remain independent, with outcomes influenced by your decisions. Combat is clunky and the character customization can be confusing, but overall it's a good experience for CRPG fans. So there you have it, best CRPGs from the last decade that are absolute must plays. What do you think? Did your favorite title make the list? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, be sure to check out my other videos. I will see you soon.